In this lesson I'm going to discuss one of my favorite topics with you, Chinese food. I'm going to take you to China and I'm going to show you a couple of things about what to expect. Because some people might be slightly worried about what they might find in China, while other people are delighted that they can try a cuisine of a different part of the world. Well, the first thing that you need to know is that the Chinese food that you will find on your traveling, on your trips in China, is going to be very different from what you're used to at home from your Chinese takeaway restaurants in your own country. Because on one hand, what happened when Chinese migrated around the world and started Chinese restaurants, they started to adapt to the local tastes. So quite often their dishes became sweeter, became less spicy, but also sometimes it got mixed up with other tastes that they found in their, their new home countries. So, for instance, in the Netherlands, we have a colonial past with Indonesia, and therefore a lot of Dutch people really like Indonesian food, or were used to eating Indonesian food. And the Chinese sort of blended that with their own cuisine, and this became a completely new fusion of food that you basically will not find in Indonesia quite often, and, but certainly also not in China. So, do not expect to find the same things. Also, what you should take into account is that if you do have some authentic uh, restaurants, Chinese restaurants in your own country, they are quite often regional. Now, of course, China is a very big country, so it has many different kinds of cuisine, as I will show you. And the authentic restaurants you'll find in your country are mostly, for instance, Cantonese with dim sum, or Sichuanese cuisine, which is popular all over the world. But they cannot be considered like a, a representable cuisine for the whole of China. So, the bad news is that you cannot go into a Chinese restaurant and expect to be able to order your favorite dishes. So, as a Dutchman, don't go in and ask for Babi Pangong, because that's actually an Indonesian dish. And if you're an American, don't expect to be able to find general sauce chicken on the menu because it's also something that was invented outside of China. Now the good thing is, the good news is that a lot of foreigners that have lived for a while in China, like myself, think that the Chinese food is really really good, really tasty and very diverse. There's always something that you will find that meets your specific personal preference. Um, and I myself actually took up cooking Chinese food, authentic Chinese food, as a hobby and I've prepared more than a thousand different dishes uh, until now and I'll tell you a bit more about that at the end of this video. So the question what is Chinese food like is yeah, basically impossible to answer. It's just as easy to answer as the question what is European food like. The dishes that you will find in Italy or Spain or France or the Netherlands or Scandinavia are so different, you basically should consider China to be something similar. China is so vast, so enormous, um, that it's basically almost like a whole continent. That there's many different regions with their own different flavors and their own cuisine and own cooking styles. So for instance in Sichuan province you have very spicy food and in Sichuan and Chongqing, the municipality of Chongqing, they also share hot pot, uh, which is a hot boiling broth where you put meat and vegetables in. It's a really popular, uh, also very, very popular um, way to spend your time also for foreigners and, and Chinese people alike, um, but it's really spicy most of the time. In Hunan, province you also have spicy food but it's more salty because they tend to use a lot of um, black fermented beans which give the food a, a salty and a smoky taste. Now, along the coast as you can imagine there's a lot more fish, uh, the food is, is more mild, is, is more fresh, there's a lot of vegetables that are prepared in such a way that they really bring out the flavors also using a lot of vinegar for instance. So, um, for instance, around the area of uh, Shanghai and uh, Jiangsu and Zhejiang, they have the Jiangnan cuisine, which is very different from what you will find in Sichuan and Hunan. 
Then, of course, in the south, you have a very different flavor again. In Guangzhou and in Hong Kong, they have dim sum and they have very different dishes. So basically, my message is that wherever you go, you will find a different type of cuisine. Now, some of these cuisines, especially the ones that you will see here in this picture, are so popular that you will find restaurants in this style all over the country. So, for instance, when we take people on a tour to Shanghai, Hangzhou and Beijing, even though we don't go to Sichuan, we will always be able to find a Sichuan restaurant and take the people there, or a hot pot restaurant. Now, we also often get the question, but, but what about all of the strange food that Chinese people eat? How, how about dogs? They eat dogs, don't they? Well, rest assured that most Chinese people do not eat dogs. Dogs and cats have also become very popular in recent years as pets. So you also see a change in behavior in, um, in the attitude of Chinese people towards animals. And there's actually a, a quite large uh, group of people that are trying to stop the eating of dog meat. Now, the eating of dog meat normally doesn't happen all that much in the bigger cities. And it's more like a rural, um, a, 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 a rural habit, and then even only in some parts of the country. So, like there's there's one place in uh, Yulin where they have a dog meat eating festival. But rest assured, this is something that is not all that common anymore, and you will not find it on the average menu in uh, the restaurant that you will be visiting. What you can find in a lot of restaurants is maybe things that we are not really used to eating anymore because we, I'm pretty sure that we used to in the past but um, we are not people that eat a lot of like for instance intestines. Um, I think personally that awful, the word for intestines, um, there's a reason why it sounds a lot like awful. It's, it's not my personal taste, but Chinese people do really like it in their noodles and in their different dishes. And they eat, eat things like duck neck or duck feet and pig ears. So you do find these things on the menus, but normally it's quite easy to avoid them. What you will also find is vegetables that you might not be familiar with, but which turn out to be really, really tasty and really interesting in the ways that the Chinese pr uh, prepare them. Like for instance, lotus root or wild rice stem and water spinach. And one of the things that I um, uh, discovered with Chinese cooking is for instance, celtus, which is uh, a sort of like a combination between celery and a lettuce. That's why it's also called celtus in the West. And it's got this real nice nutty flavor. So eating out in China, also enables you to discover some real good things. Now, not all of them will be uh, to your personal taste. There's also things like bitter melon, um, and as the name implies, it's really an acquired taste, and not everybody likes it, not even all of the Chinese people like that. So, when you go into a restaurant, you often will ask for a menu. Sometimes, the menus have pictures, which is a good thing. So you can actually see what the prepared dish looks like and you have an idea about how spicy it is. If it looks very red, it's normally very spicy and also what the ingredients might be. And some restaurants even have English menus uh, and then you will see, not normally see the pictures and you will also see the English translation. But the thing that you will notice is that sometimes these English translations, which could, be, uh, could have been done with uh, Google Translate, for instance, or uh, any other kind of machine uh, translation, um, are not always that accurate. Um, they can be extremely funny though. So for instance, in Chinese menus, I have a whole collection of pictures that I took from Chinese menus. Um, and these are a couple of examples of things that I found, like the department of bombing. Or when you think about the tasty mountain people sweat food or farmhouse demolished. Um, I didn't think that I really wanted to order something like um, Typhoon Shelter Cigar Box or The Bandit's Liver. Um, and I wasn't sure about handbag food either. And this is probably the weirdest thing that I found is the smell of urine mixed with dried. And that cliffhanger had me really worried. The, the urine already had me worried, but the dried what? Um, so I didn't order that one, although the picture looks good. 
So it can often uh, give you a good laugh. Now, if you're not sure about these dishes, if the translation is off, or if you have a menu that's only available in Chinese, there's a couple of tricks that you can pull to actually find out what it is. Nowadays, if you have a smartphone and you've got Google Translate on it, you can use the camera option to actually translate the menu. Um, what you can also do if you are, are using WeChat, the WeChat QR code scanner also has an option to translate, to take a picture with your camera and then have the menu translated. So this quite often helps you a lot to find something that, that you would like to eat. If you're on a business trip with some uh, of your, uh, your, your, your business partners in China, they will probably help you to order some, some things that you will like. Now, also be warned that nowadays uh, in some restaurants, they don't actually have menus anymore. Uh, they have a QR code on your table and you need to scan that QR code in WeChat and that will bring up the menu. So in those cases, you depend more on the actual pictures and figuring out what it is. Uh, you might ask them if they may have an, an English menu, which might be possible in places like Shanghai or Beijing, uh, but this could involve a bit more puzzling. Then again, you might accidentally find something really tasty that you didn't know before. So just, just give it a try. Now, vegetarians might have a bit of a more difficult time in China because there's not that many vegetarians in China and even though they have a lot of vegetable dishes, quite often they use a bit of uh, minced pork or, or other meat, um, uh, meat complementary meat to actually give it some, some uh, more meaty flavor. So some of the vegetable dishes might still include meat. So the best thing, if you're with a, a, a business partner, tell them and they will make sure that they will order some dishes which are vegetarian, or you can tell the waiter or the waitress, wo bu chi ro, wo bu chi ro. Um, I don't eat meat and then they will also probably be able to help you. Another very interesting thing about having dinner um, in a Chinese restaurant is that if you have a very elaborate dinner, uh, it's normally served on a round plate, so you don't order your own dish. You order several dishes and you share them with the group that you're having dinner with. Now, this um, means that you, you don't pick one dish, you just turn that glass plate uh, around, I think it's called the Lazy Susan in, uh, in English, and you just take from the different, um, the different dishes that pass. Now, you might wonder why there is no rice. Um, normally at these uh, more bigger dinners, these more lavish dinners, rice is served at the end to sort of fill up the gaps that you might still have in your stomach. Um, but it's perfectly fine if you prefer, I normally prefer to have rice along with the dishes to ask for a bowl of rice at the start and they will serve it to you. You might have to remind the waiter or the waitress um, once because it's sometimes not something that they are very uh, familiar with, but it will be possible to get your rice at the start of the dinner. Now, don't expect soup to be served at the start of the dinner. That's also something that if it's been ordered, it normally arrives at the end of the dinner. Again, sort of as a refreshing, a um, uh, refreshing uh, part of your, your meal and to fill up the gaps and sometimes it's followed by uh, a, a, a plate of cut up fruit like melon and stuff like that. So that's as far as food goes. Now drinks, um, something that you might not be familiar with is that the most popular drink in China is actually hot water. A lot of Chinese people drink hot water. In Chinese restaurants, you will always find free hot water. In train stations, you can get free hot water. On the trains themselves, you can get free hot water. So Chinese people drink a lot of hot water because they think that's more healthy for your body than cold drinks. So, but of course, tea is also something that you can always order in, in a restaurant, whereas the hot water might most of the times be free. As far as alcohol is concerned, um, if you have like a more formal dinner or a business dinner or a dinner with uh, um, government officials, they might break open a bottle of baijiu. Baijiu, literally white alcohol, is like 50-60% 
of alcohol is really strong and it's used in these tiny little glasses and people go around the table just toasting to other people and, and complimenting them and uh, it's it's sort of like an icebreaker but do be very careful I personally don't like the aftertaste of it it makes me belch a lot um, and like I said it's really strong so uh, do be very careful if you don't want to drink that just uh, say that uh, you cannot drink heavy alcohol and you can stick to beer or wine normally at restaurants there will be wines white wines red wines are quite popular in China as well and there will always be beer there would, could be uh, imported beer but also local beer the local beers most of the time have a lesser a lower alcohol percentage that you might be used to um, but actually with with your dinner that works out quite well most of the time do ask for cold beer because most Chinese people like I said they some of them don't really like to uh, consume cold drinks so you might have to specifically ask for cold beer if you want to have a cold beer otherwise you will get one at room temperature now this is basically the most important things that you need to know about Chinese food and having dinner in a Chinese restaurant. If you really want to know more about different cuisines in China and, and see some of the different dishes and learn more about them, what you can do is you can go to another website um, that we run, it's chinatalk.nl and if you go to the YouTube channel you will find an icon in the menu you will find all of our uh, videos for China Talk and among these are some videos I did about Chinese cooking authentic Chinese food. So do go and check them out if you want to learn more about Chinese food. Now, until then, have a good trip to China. Do enjoy your meal. Don't be too scared and do try out some of the different things that you will find on the menus. Even if they are just in, uh, in Chinglish. So, enjoy your meal. Bon appetit and see you next time.